Alright, what's up everybody? Back with another edition of Every Day. Oops. Hope you guys having a good one. Today, we're going to be doing a draft big board um, for the 2023 NBA draft that's coming up actually in about a little bit less than two weeks. Crazy, the draft is coming up very soon. The season's about to end. And yeah, we're doing my draft big board. It's my personal big board that I made of the draft prospects. This will be part one. We'll be talking about prospects 60 to 31. And then tomorrow will be 30 to number one. Uh, thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the content around here, you know, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. We have said a lot. And uh, yeah, I don't want to waste any more of your time because it's probably going to be a longer video. So let's get right into it. But before we get right into it, I just want to say this is my personal draft board and my personal prospects who I have ranked. So if you do disagree, cool. You know, I don't really care. You know, I'm just saying, just to put a disclaimer, this is my personal guys, you know, who I personally ranked. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it. So, starting off at number 60, we have Oscar Sheboy. He's a 6'8", 254-pound center out of Kentucky. Uh, he's 23 years old, center. And he had a really good year last year at Kentucky. Uh, a lot of college fans know about him because, I mean, his story is crazy. Um, went to West Virginia, you know, balled out, transferred over to Kentucky. He just had a very crazy journey to get to Kentucky and play at the level he did. He's number 60 for me because it's very tough for him because he's not a very skilled big man. Like, he doesn't shoot the ball. One thing he does do, he hustles. He has a lot of energy. He rebounds the ball well, very, very, very well, you know, for easy putbacks and stuff like that defensively he got a lot of blocks as well because he's six eight with a seven three wingspan which i didn't even realize until i was doing my draft work and i saw he had seven three wingspan and i was like wow okay but the only thing that's gonna be tough for him is that he's only six eight and he can't really play any other position like i can't even see him as a power forward because he cannot he can't space the floor or move super super well so it's gonna be very tough for him to be able to translate over to the league being a six eight center the thing he had, does have going for him is his wingspan and his uh, his hard work ethic ability to, you know, get in the trenches and rebound and work hard. So hopefully, you know, maybe a team could take a chance on that. And he's my number 60 because, yeah, his just his size and how the game is, you know, being a smaller center is going to be very, very tough. But he does have his wingspan going for him. So I really want to see how that works at the next level. At number 59, I have Zvonimir Ivisic. Uh, he is a 7'2", 220-pound center. Uh, he played at SC Derby last year in Montenegro. He's from Bosnia-Herzegovina. He's only 19 years old. He's a center. And he's still kind of a very raw prospect, but he's got he got some things. You know, it looks pretty good. Uh, dunks. I feel like every time I saw him pick and roll, drive, dunks, you know, solid shot blocker, rebounding as well. And has potential to be a shooter. He only shot 26% from three-point range last year. But looking at him in the draft combine and stuff, he's comfortable taking the three-point shot. Of course, it's going to be a lot. That's going to be a big thing for him. He's going to have to develop that a lot. But the three-point shot has potential there. Uh, he's just still raw. I mean, he's still 19 overseas. Still needs probably to get stronger, you know, stuff like that. Fill out his body. But I think he might. he could be something very decent down there around 59 you know he, he's definitely got some tools it's just how is that going to develop in the nba you know at 58 i have mike miles jr he is a 6-1 point guard out of tcu he's a junior he's 20 years old and i have him going a little late i loved him in college basketball i watched him for his few years at tcu he was one of my favorite guys to watch you know kind of that smaller point guard that can go get buckets aggressive attacks the rim defensively he's pretty good as well you know he's got things i really like about him you know tough finisher defensively can shoot transition all this type of stuff the only thing is that's gonna maybe hinder him is his size you know he's still only six one uh, he has a six foot wingspan at six one which is not ideal you know and uh it's just he's in that weird spot where he's a point guard but he's more of a score first point guard you know he's he's more of a score first point guard. he can facilitate but he only averaged two assists a game last year you know he does can pass the ball but he doesn't if if 
he has the opportunity to score, he's going to go score and not pass. You know, so I think it's going to be a little bit tough for him, especially with him being that small. You know, and he did have a lot of tough finishes in college, but this is the NBA now. You know, it's a different level of athletes and competition. So really want to see how that's going to work out for him. Uh, the good thing he has on his side is that defensively, you know, he hustles and he's kind of a dog defensively at, despite being so small. So that could potentially maybe open some doors for him. But again, I think it's going to be kind of a little bit tough for him at his size. But I'm wishing the best for him and wish he does well because he he's a very fun player at TCU that I want to see succeed. At 57, I have Adama Sonogo. He is a 6'8", 256-pound center from UConn. One tournament, most outstanding player this year. He's a junior. He's 21 years old. Very hardworking, big man. You know, very strong NBA-ready body. He's got a 7'2". Wingspan at 6'8", scores well inside, rebounding as well. He has good touch around the rim. He's efficient. He shot 60% from the field last year. And even his shooting might be a thing as well. He shot 76% from the free throw line. He started taking a little bit more jumpers. He had a couple threes in the NCAA tournament. So maybe that could be something that I could hold on to. But I think he's got very similar things to Oscar Sheboy where he's only 6'8". And I can't really see him playing any other position. The thing different from Oscar is that he actually is confident to shoot the ball and has actually shown small amounts of ability to show the ball. But also, unlike Oscar, his defense, his shot blocking, his steals aren't as good as Oscar. So, again, for him, it's going to be very tough. Someone's going to give him a chance because of the tournament and because I feel like what he did in college, someone will give him a chance maybe to show some stuff. But, again, it's going to be very tough being a 6'8 big that can't really space the floor, can't really move like a power forward, you know. But hopefully, maybe the shooting ability comes around and maybe that changes the whole... If the shooting ability comes around, that changes everything for him. But I have him at 56. So I meant to say 57 because at 50, actual 56, I have Isaiah Wong. He's a 6'3", 178-pound guard out of Miami. He's a senior, 22 years old. Seeing him in the tournament the last few years, seeing him at Miami, I was a big fan of those Miami teams the last two years. That made it far. And Isaiah Wong's been kind of the head of the snake in a way. He brings a lot of energy, a very athletic guard, gets the basket. His shooting ability has really developed as well, especially his senior year. Uh, steals are very, very good. Get those as well. Defensively, he can lock in. Uh, he's a very fun player to watch. The only thing is that, again, he's in that kind of weird level of is he a point guard or a shooting guard? Because he has the size of a point guard, but he's really, I feel like he plays like a two guard because he's more of a scoring guard, but he's only 6'3", 178 pounds. So can he be a point guard? Is he going to be a two guard at the next level? And can he effectively be a two guard at the next level? And the jump shot, how real was it at senior year? Can he consistently knock down jumpers? Because a lot of his game is more getting out in transition. He plays really well in transition, getting out there, you know, getting easy dunks, easy layups. And also getting to the rim. So in the NBA, in the next level, can he knock down jumpers as consistently? Maybe little mid-range jumpers. I didn't really see a whole lot of that in college. But that's something I'm really looking forward to see at the next level. But I really think Isaiah Wong can make it at the next level because of his athletic ability and his defensive ability. I think someone should give him a chance because I think he can be very solid. At 55, I have Seth Lundy. He is a 6'5", 214-pound wing out of Penn State, he's a senior, 23 years old. He is a shooter. <laughs> if there's one thing he's going to do on the court, he's going to shoot the ball. He shot 40% from three last year and on almost six and a half attempts per game. Uh, definitely going to take his shots. He took 10 shots. He averaged less than one assist a game. He makes a lot of tough shots too. Looking at his tape, a lot a tough shot maker, especially from three-point range. Very tough shot maker. He's one of those guys that Give it to him at the end of the shot clock. He's going to throw it up, and somehow it goes in. You know, shooting was really good. Uh, he can get to the rim very solid as well because he has kind of a wider frame and rebounding as well. Uh, the only thing for him is that can he do anything else besides shoot the ball? And can, is he going to pass the ball? The shot selection isn't great. Kind of gets tunnel vision sometimes. How well is that going to do? But I think definitely a team's going to give him a shot just because it's three-point shooting. I mean, I think his three-point shooting is very good. And by the way, I'm going to do a version two of this. This isn't the final draft board. I'm going to do another version of this. And honestly, I think maybe this guy might be one that moves up, depending on how 
combine and stuff goes, I think he might be a guy that moves up because his three point shooting is probably going to be very valued for a lot of teams. So I won't be surprised if he's a dude that moves up in the draft just because, I mean, his three point shooting, very, very good at, at Penn State. So I could see. At 54, I have Chris Livingston. He is a 6'7", 219-pound small forward out of Kentucky. He's a freshman, 19 years old. He was number 12 overall in the recruiting class in ESPN 100 in 2022. Uh, statistically, didn't really stand out at Kentucky his freshman year. Didn't really start playing a lot more until the season went on. He became a starter. And he's just one. Of, he, he was a kind of a glue guy role player at Kentucky. You know, a lot of offensive rebounds, a lot of catch-and-shoot threes, you know, cutting, stuff like that. And there's been a lot of talk about him because a lot of people aren't really super excited about his decision to go to the draft and not come back another year at Kentucky. But also the, a few days ago, I think Sean's reported saying that he um, is not going to do any more workouts. So a lot of people believe that someone gave him a promise down there in the second round. And I think he should be a second round pick. I mean, see, I saw, I saw Kentucky. He didn't take over as a star player, but coming into the NBA – not he probably wouldn't be a star player anyway so why not him playing a role at Kentucky he could do that similar to the NBA where you know he's got a big body strong body he could finish around the rim very well catch a shoot was very very good as well at Kentucky and I think he is yeah like a no doubt second round pick but I definitely do believe also that if he did stay at Kentucky another the year probably could have been a first round pick you know a little bit more opportunity a little bit more development but I think he's worth a chance in the second round and I think he's another one of those dudes I think next big board I think he'll move up a little bit because I, I like what I saw at Kentucky at 53 I have Jordan Miller he's a 6'5 192 pound small forward out of Miami he's a senior 23 years old had a big tournament outbreak he had a big game especially against Texas he had 27 and shot 7 for 7 and 13 for 13 he had a really good NCAA tournament and he's just one of those dudes that just is a very good role player and makes good winning plays. You know, like he's never, he's not going to be the dude that's going to go out and drop 30 or have the crazy highlight reels or anything like that. But he's going to make the big plays down the stretch. There's a lot of times I saw in Miami where they needed the big three pointer at the end of the game and he was the one to take it. Kind of like Andre Godala ish role with the Warriors where he didn't really do all game. He really was like doing the little things, you know, rebounding, making the good defensive play making the little cuts, scoring inside the basket, catch and shoot threes. At the end of the game, he was the one that took the big threes and hit them a lot of the time as well. So I think he definitely has a role there, being kind of a good role player, come off the bench, do all the little things type of guy. The only thing is that his jump shot, can he consistently knock that down as well? Uh, he's not really a shot creator, which I think is good. He can do that. But also, what position will he play? I think it's better now because in the NBA – being 6'5", you can be a 2 and a 3. And I think he plays more like a 4, 3, even maybe even a 4. Sometimes he looks like, but he's only 6'5", 192. He does have a 6'11", wingspan. But I'm very interested to see how he's used at the next level. But I think if a team can use him right, he could be a very, very valuable role player for a team. At 52, I have Muhammad Gay. He is a 6'11", 213-pound power forward out of Washington State. He's a sophomore, 20 years old. From Senegal. He's a very interesting prospect as well. They list him. He's power forward. And looking at his tape, he probably plays more like a power forward. He's 6'11". He does have a 7'3 wingspan. A little bit of a smaller frame. But he's got a lot of skill. You know, could shoot the ball pretty well. Even though he only shot 27% from 3 last year. Uh, the jump shot capability is there. The mid-range looked very good. You know, could score inside. Uh, perimeter defense, he can hold his own. He moves very well for a 6'11 guy. So there's a lot of things to like about Muhammad. Uh, the only thing is that the big question is he's probably going to, is he going to be a power forward or center? Because he does play more like a power forward. And he probably will most likely be a power forward. But teams are probably maybe try him at center because of his length and his size. And if he does get tried out at center, can he do that consistently enough? You know, so it's going to be that. He definitely needs to get a little stronger, a little bit more developed because he does try to go one-on-one -on -one a lot of the time. So he's going to have to chill that out a little bit. He averaged two over almost two and a half turnovers a game and only two assists, not even two assists. 
so yeah, I would like to see more shot blocks and steals too, because he only aver he didn't average a steal or a block per game, which is very interesting. So I'd like to see a little bit more of that. But I think he's definitely a prospect teams would take a look at. I mean, being that big and moving the way he does, I think he'll be very interesting in a second round. At 51, I have Keontae Johnson. He's a 6'5", 239-pound forward out of Kansas State. He's a senior, 23 years old. We know the whole story about him at Florida, playing very well. He had that scary collapse on the court a few years ago, uh, but then sat out, but then came back, transferred to Kansas State, played very well last year, and the NBA cleared him to play. So that's really, really good. And he's very interesting as a prospect as well because, I mean, he's got a very strong NBA-ready body already, gets to the rim and score. His shooting, very, very smooth jumper, makes a lot of very tough shots. Uh, the thing, the only thing is going to be what position he's going to play because if he plays maybe like a power forward, small forward, but he is only 6'5". So really interesting to see how, if this stuff can translate to him as a forward because he has the size of a guard, even though he does have a bigger body, so that will help him out a lot. And he consistently, can he play off the ball? And can he do other things besides score? Because if he wasn't really scoring, he wasn't really doing a whole lot much else. You know, I think he has some tools defensively, maybe to be kind of a fire hydrant type of body. Josh Hart is esque type defender body, but want to see what that does to the next level. But I think he's definitely going to get an opportunity just because his shooting ability, I think, looked very, very well. And his scoring ability looked pretty solid last year at Kansas State. At 50, I have Julian Phillips. He's a 6'7", 197-pound, small foot out of Tennessee. He's a freshman, 19 years old. He's a number 13 recruit in the class of 2022. And at Tennessee, the numbers don't stand out a whole lot, but he is a freshman. Didn't really get a lot more playing time until later in the season. He's got a lot of potential skills that I can see, you know. He hustles a lot, always around the rim. A lot of offensive rebounds and de even defensive rebounds as well. Uh, he gets to the line a lot. You know, the jumper still needs a little work, but it looks like it could be something solid. And defensively, he's pretty good as well. But he's still very raw. He's still going to need a little bit more development, you know, especially, you know, getting his own. Didn't look that great last year. The jumper, again, still needs a little bit more development. Probably still needs to get a little bit more stronger, fill out his body. Finishing through contact wasn't that great last year either. So there's definitely still a lot of things he needs to develop. But I definitely see why teams are going to give him an opportunity, potentially at 19 years old, because he was a top high school guy. He already does kind of have the body and some of the kind of intangible things already kind of there. So I'm... Um, I really want to see what team will give him a chance down there in the second round. At 49, I have Nikola Jurisic. He's a 6'8", 218-pound wing. Uh, he played at KK Mega Basket last year in Serbia, where he's from. He's only 19 years old. He has a lot of good skills that I like to see. You know, he's very athletic. You know, he can let it get to the basket, finish. He likes to dunk. You know, he makes a lot of tough shots. You know, has the ball a lot. At, down in Serbia, KK Mega Basket. He had the ball a lot. He made a lot of tough shots. His passing ability was very solid as well. He's got some good things. Uh, the thing is, definitely needs to get more consistent. He only shot 19% from three last year. So I'd like to see more of that. And more off ball. He had the ball in his hands a lot last year. So I really want to see how he could be catch and shoot or moving without the ball. I didn't really see a whole lot of that. But he's definitely got some potential. You know, he might be a dude that might be a drafted stash guy. I could see him maybe going back over for another year or two because he is only 19 years old. Maybe another year or two to kind of develop a little bit more. But I think he's definitely a very solid chance down there in the second round for a draft and stash guy. At 48, I have Ben Shepard. Might be a guy you never heard of a whole lot, but he's probably going to be a name you hear a lot more as the draft comes up. Uh, he was Because he was a guy I never really heard of until I started doing my draft work, and I saw this guy, and I was like, wow. Like, I'm a fan. Uh, he's a 6'6", 195-pound shooting guard out of Belmont. Uh, he's a senior, but he's only 21. He'll be 22 next month, which is kind of crazy for a senior. But he's a guy that might be a second-round steal. You know, he did go to Belmont, so not a lot of eyes are on him. But his shooting ability, very good. He shot 41% from three last year on six attempts. He shot 47% from the field on 14 shots. But the free throw shooting was very confusing. He only shot 68% from the free throw line, which is very weird, even though his jumper looks pretty good. Uh, off ball, came off a lot of screens to attack, a lot of catch and shoot opportunity as well. Very high IQ guy, cutting, passing defensively. 
he's going to be one of those dudes that, you know, no one really knows, knows about, but he'll go in the second round, and he'll go to a team like the Spurs or something and kind of stand out and be like, how do we let this dude fall in the second round? I feel like he'll be one of those guys. Smaller, mid-major guy, high IQ, didn't really get a lot of big offers, but he'll come in and get the job done. You know, I think he'll be a guy that might move up in the draft boards as well as teams look at him. But, yeah, I think there's a lot to like in Ben Shepard um, as kind of a mid-major, high IQ, second-round pick kind of wing that could do a lot of different things. At 47, I have Ricky Council the fourth. He's a 6'6", 28-pound shooting guard out of Arkansas. He's a junior, 21 years old. He has a 6'9", wingspan at 6'6". Uh, very athletic wing. Has some crazy dunks at Arkansas. You can go watch that if you, do, if you haven't. Uh, and get to the basket and finish pretty well. He's got a wide body at 6'6". Six, six. Uh, defensively, he's pretty solid as well. Steals. Uh, the three-point shot definitely isn't there yet. There's potential. Uh, he only shot 27% from three last year. He's more definitely more of a get to the get to the rim, get to the basket type dude. And I, I want to see his ball handling get a little bit better as well. But I think he's a very solid get down there in the second round as potential wing that has shooting potential. If they can, if he can unlock the three point shot very consistently, he can be very solid because he's already get to the rim. He can already play good D. He could already be very athletic, cut and dunk on someone. I can see that happening in summer league. He'll have some crazy dunks. But I think the shooting is going to be the big key. If someone can unlock that, he could be a very solid get in the second round. At 46, I have Jalen Clark. He's a 6'5", 204-pound wing out of UCLA. He's a junior, 21 years old. Uh, probably falling in a lot of draft because he did get injured last year and missed the NCAA tournament for UCLA, which really sucks. He won defense play of the year in their conference last year. He averaged over 2.5 steals per game, which is crazy. Um, he's a wing that, I mean, defensively, he's already there. I mean, he averaged two and a half steals. He's got length. He's at a 6'9 wingspan at 6'5. Uh, he plays bigger. I was surprised he's 6'5. I thought he was like 6'7, 6'8, but he's still only 6'5, but he plays a lot bigger than that. Uh, cutting, very good as well. He scores well inside. He's very fast. Looking at, looking at, you know, the tape transition, he was out. <laughs> so, very athletic. Of course, going to be challenged because of his injury. How is that injury going to affect his athleticism and stuff like that? Uh, the only thing is that his jumper needs a little bit of work. He shot 33% last year from three on two and a half attempts. But I think it's, he could still get a lot better at shooting the ball. And then, of course, the injury as well. How is the injury going to affect his athleticism and stuff like that? But I think he's a very solid guy in the second round. Kind of maybe might be a steal. A guy that maybe if the injury doesn't really affect him, he come back and do the things he's doing at UCLA. He could be a, a team. He could really pay off in the second round. I'm taking a chance on an injured player. At 45, we got Tristan Vukcevic. He's a 7-foot, 223-pound power forward. Played at Real Madrid B in Spain last year. He's from Italy. He is Serbian. He's 20 years old. And I really like Tristan Vukcevic. You know, he could shoot the ball very well, stretch the floor. He shot 38% from three on only one and a half attempts per game. But seeing him at the draft combine, he, had, he was at the draft combine camp. He did scrimmages and stuff. He looked very good. Stretching the floor, mid-range even as well. Runs the floor pretty well. Has solid handles for a 7-footer. The only thing that's going to be the thing for him is if he's going to be, because he's listed as a power forward at 7 feet tall. And you know at 7 feet, they're going to try him out at center. I don't know if he can really play center at the next level because rebounding, he's not a very great rebounding. He only averaged 2 rebounds per game. Last year at 7 feet tall, again, the minutes are kind of weird. But can he play center at the next level? Can he score inside as well? He settles a lot. For jumpers as well, where he could have backed someone down and get to the rim. He just kind of faced up and did a mid-range as well. But also it's going to be tough because defensively, can he play the four? If he's going to be a power forward, can he play the four defensively at the next level? Can he move his feet well? Because nowadays fours are very more, a lot more athletic and handle the ball and do a lot of other skills besides post up and stay in the paint. So can he defend the four at the next level if he's going to be a power forward? But I think he's definitely a very solid guy. Maybe it's draft and stash, dude. I can see that for another year or two. But I think he definitely has a lot of potential down here in the second round. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Vukcevic in the second round. At 44, we have Imani Bates. Big name to talk here in the second round. Uh, 6'9", 179 pound, small forward out of Eastern Michigan. He's a 19-year-old sophomore. He's the number three guy in the 2021 ESPN class. 
We all know about him in middle school, high school. He was the top guy on social media. Everyone knew about him. Went to Memphis. Uh, had injuries. Didn't really work out there. Then he had some legal trouble off the court. And then transfers to Eastern Michigan. Uh, last year, his stats looked pretty good. He had some big games, but he did play for Eastern Michigan as well. He took almost 16 shots a game down there. But, I mean... It's very tough because he does have so much skill and talent. It's just the off court stuff. Um, maybe that, maybe some attitude problems. I don't know. You know, I don't know personally, so I'm not gonna put that in his name. But also, like, what can he do besides score the ball? I think really, like, of course he could score. I mean, that's the one thing he could score at all levels. Three pointers, mid range, get to the rim. He could do all that. Makes a lot of very tough shots. Took a lot of very deep threes that he made that were just like wow. You know, so, I mean, at the very least, he's going to be a guy that can come off the bench and score at the wing position, provide some energy off the bench, you know. But it's just, what can he do other, can he do defense? Because defensively, he looks like he has tools. He's 6'9", you know. Uh, he definitely needs to get lost bigger and strong. He's only 179 pounds. Definitely needs to kind of fill out a little bit more. Uh, the shot selection isn't great. Kind of gets tunnel vision a lot of the time. So can he do other things besides just taking tough shots? Really, and if he can, if he really buys in to a team, and a team gives him a chance, and he can lock in and do maybe do other things while also score the ball at the level he can, I think he'd be a steal. Obviously, in the second round, he's got the talent. It's just can he put it all together, and can he kind of move smoothly into the NBA and find a role that really fits him? At forty-three, we have Kobe Brown. He's a 6'7", 252-pound power forward out of Missouri. He's a senior, 23 years old. He's a very interesting guy for me, you know, because he's only 6'7". He's 252. He's a big body guy, but he moves very well for his size. 6'7", 252, he moves like a guard out there. I mean, he moves very well, can handle the ball well. Uh, Playmaking, his passing ability, very good for a big man. His shooting ability has gotten a lot better. Last year, he shot 45% from three on three attempts which is very surprising. I uh, score well inside. He could kind of be kind of that do-it-all power forward. Come off the bench. He can make plays on the offense. He can play make. He can shoot the three. He can score inside. He does that all. It's just how can he translate that to the NBA as a wing? Because in the NBA, he's going to be a small forward power forward uh, against very another more very athletic guys. So I don't know if he's going to be able to do that as much because he's not going to have the ball in his hands a lot. And Missouri had the ball in his hands a lot. Um, but in the NBA, he's not going to have that. So can he consistently play off the ball and make plays off the ball, shoot the ball well? Can he do that? And then defensively, you know, can he stay in front of wings at the next level, the NBA level? But I think he's a very talented guy, a guy that's probably going to be a surprise maybe in the next level. Not a lot of people maybe know about Kobe Brown right now, but I think he can surprise some people in the next level. And hopefully he does stick around because I'm a fan. I, I like what I saw from Kobe Brown. I think he's one of the more interesting guys in this draft. At 42, I have Jalen Wilson. 6'6", 230-pound forward out of Kansas. He's a senior, 22 years old. Uh, Kansas legend down there. He had a crazy statistical season. He averaged 20 and 8 last year for Kansas. Um, just, yeah, he was very good in college. Uh, he's got NBA-ready body, kind of wider, big body already. He uses strength a lot to get to the rim and score. Catch and shoot. He had, I was surprised by the amount of catch and shoot he had last year at Kansas. He knocked him down pretty solidly. He scored well inside. It's just very w weird for him because he is a little bit smaller in height wise for wing. The way he plays, he plays like he's six nine, but he's really only six six. Um, he doesn't have a he has a six eight wingspan at six six, so he doesn't have crazy length. But yeah, just can he do other things besides get to the rim and score? Can, if that catch and shoot can be very consistent, that could be something. But can he play off the ball consistently? Because at Kansas, of course, he was the guy. In the NBA, he's not going to be that. So can he do other things the, off the ball? Can he cut? Def can he defend at a good level? Can he do? Can he play make? He doesn't really pass the ball or play make for others a lot. And I feel like he doesn't really. He's one of those guys where he doesn't really have one skill that stands out above the rest. He kind of has a few other skills that are pretty good, but he doesn't have one that stands out. So. It's going to be very interesting to see how he fits to the next level, but I think he, he has the potential if that catch and shoot can be very effective like it was last year. At 41, I have Jordan Walsh. Uh, it's a 6'6", 204-pound forward out of Arkansas. 
He's a 19-year-old freshman. He's a number 11 guy in the 2022 class. And, I mean, he's a dude that defensively, he's already got it. I mean, defensively, he's 6'6 with a 7'1 wingspan at 19, and he was guarding some of the best guys uh, in the NCAA tournament. And so defensively, he's there. Defensively, he's there. Uh, the real big question is, can the three-point shot come along? He only shot 27% from three last year on only two attempts. He didn't really take that many three-pointers um, in games. But if that three-point shot could even be decent, I'm not saying he has to be a 45% lights-out three-point shooter, but if it could just be solid enough where people respect him, he will be in the NBA for 15, 16 years. I mean, we see guys like Trevor Ariza, guys like that that just stick around for a while just because they can hit threes and play solid defense. The way Jonah Walsh can defend already, if he could just be a solid three-point shooter, you know, he'll have a career for a very long time. Uh, you know, and he's athletic enough. He can, you know, dunk. He's got long arms. He can get to the rim solid as well. But it's just, yeah, can he consistently hit the three ball? And can that develop into something good? And I think he's a guy that's going to rise up draft boards as well when the draft comes around. And I won't be surprised if he's a dude that goes a little bit higher than what he's projected to go. At 40, we have Olivier Maxens Prosper, one of the best names in the draft, by the way. Uh, he's a 6'7", 212-pound forward out of Marquette. He's a junior, 20 years old. He's from Canada. And he's a dude that I didn't realize was on draft boards a lot when I was watching him. But then re-watching his tape, I kind of made sense. You know, he's a very, he's a length. I mean, he's got 7-1 wingspan at 6'7". Uh, he uses length pretty well uh, defensively. Very solid. You know, the catch and shoot looked pretty good, better than what you expect. He shot 34% from three on three attempts per game. Uh, finish inside, some crazy finishes. He shot 51% from the field last year. Um, and just brings a lot of energy. You know, he'll be that dude that get a big block or get a big steal and get a big putback dunk. And we'll make the crowd get into the game. He's one, he's one of those type of players. A lot of energy, a lot of hustle. You know, he falls on the ground a lot. I feel like after everything he does, he falls on the ground. So he's definitely a very intriguing guy down there in the second round for his defense ability. And if that catch and shoot could be very consistent, you know, um, and bring he could bring that energy a lot, he'll be a very good, probably a fan favorite kind of guy for a team. So I'm very interested to see what team takes him in the second round. At 39, I have Amari Bailey. He's a 6'4", 191-pound, two-guard out of UCLA. He's a freshman, 19 years old. He was a number five guy in the 2022 class. Uh, we know about him a lot in high school. Sierra Canyon, he was really good. Goes to UCLA. Had a very solid freshman year. And he's a guy I think I might have on my draft board a little bit higher than other guys do. Uh, but I, I'm a fan of Amari Bailey, you know? Uh, he's a guard that he gets to the basket very aggressive and getting to the rim and scoring. You know, uh, can finish very well around the way. He shot 49% from the field. And the, the three-point shooting is something, you know, decent. You know, he only he, do, he only took a little bit less than two three-point attempts per game, but he shot 39%. Um, he's also very comfortable in the mid-range pull-up as well. Um, so that that's going to be a thing in the next level. Can he consistently take jumpers? Um, I don't know if maybe that's because of confidence thing. He doesn't really take a lot of shots, or that's just because, you know, he knows he can get to the rim and score easily. So... Can he consistently shoot the ball and maybe create jumpers to the next level and be off the ball? But he can also handle the ball a lot as well. He definitely did a lot more in the tournament as well because of the injuries. He had a little bit more on his on his uh, docket that he had to do, but he, he provided it. So I think he's a guy that could definitely fit in at the next level in the NBA. Um, and I'm very interested to see how, how he does fit and what team does take a chance on him in the second round. Because I think he, I mean, he's definitely going to get drafted. I'm on, I just want to see what team... He goes to how he can develop um, in the NBA. At 38, we got another guy that I feel like isn't really I didn't really know until I started doing my draft work. Bobby Clintman. Uh, it's 6'10", 225 pound forward out of Wake Forest. He's a freshman, 20 years old. He's from Sweden. And he was a dude that statistically doesn't look like anything, honestly. He averaged five points and four rebounds a game. But watching him is like, wow, I can see why some people have him on, on the draft board. You know, he's kind of a guy that has a lot of skills as a forward, do-it-all type forward. You know, he can pass the ball well. He can defend um, different positions. He can shoot the ball, move off the ball, cut well. Like, he's got kind of it all. Do-it-all type forward that can be kind of maybe a Swiss Army knife a little bit, um, especially with his size and the way he, what things he can do 
Oh, he's another one of those dudes that doesn't really have one ability that is super, super great at. He just have a, a lot of different abilities that he can use. Uh, he definitely needs to kind of get stronger and fill out a little bit more because he's a little bit skinny looking at 6'10". But, I mean, he's got a lot of potential. And I think he might be a dude that might drop just because a lot of people don't know him. But I think he'd be a guy that comes to the next level and surprise a lot of people and be like, wow, I can't believe we let him fall to this team, especially with the right team. If he can go to a team that can really use him right, I think he could definitely be a dude that would be like, dang, how do we let this guy fall? You know? So I'm very excited to see what he could do within the, at the next level. At 37, I have Terquavion Smith. Uh, he's a 6'3", 163-pound, two-guard out of NC State. He's a sophomore, 20 years old. He's a very he's very interesting because I think early in the year, he definitely was higher. You know, and then as the season went on, he kind of dropped, 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 dropped a little bit. Um, he's He's a very interesting player. Um, cause he is only under 63 pounds, he's 63, but he is a two guard because he will shoot that ball. <laughs> he will shoot from the three from half court if he wants to. He does not care. He has a lot of range and he can shoot very well too. Like he took eight three pointers a game last year. He shot 33%, but he had a lot of games where he hits four, five, six threes in game. So he can shoot the, shoot the ball, you know, makes a lot of very tough shots. He's very athletic, very fast, get out transition. He's a blur. Um, but it's just, it's very interesting. He kind of has maybe a Bones Highland-ish type of game, I want to say. They have kind of the same build, same kind of mold. Bones is more of a go-get-a-bucket-from-anywhere type dude. Turquoise Johnson is more of a shooter type dude. That's how he gets buckets. Um, but yeah, not great sausage selection. Uh, efficiency was not great. He only shot 38% from the field last year on 16 shots per game. Um, doesn't really attack the rim too much. And he's smaller. So definitely it's very interesting to see how he's gonna play at the next level. You know? But I think someone's gonna take a chance just because of that shooting ability. That shooting ability is very crazy. So I think someone's gonna give him a shot. Definitely. So yeah, I wanna see what how he translates to the NBA. At thirty six I have Julian Strother. He's a six seven, two hundred and nine pound, two guard out of Gonzaga. He's a junior, twenty one years old. He's been at Gonzaga for a lot. I've watched him for a lot. And I'm a big fan of Julian Strother, honestly. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, he's a dude that can do a lot of things on the ball. You know, he can off on the ball. He can handle very well. Uh, shooting the ball was very good. He shot 40% from three last year on five attempts. Uh, had some big shooting games, especially hit that big shot against UCLA in the tournament. Uh, that was one of the most confident game winners from deep I've, I've seen. Uh, off the ball, he could score pretty well coming off screens. And shooting, catch and shoot. Uh, he can also get to the rim. Has nice touch around the rim. Defensively, he's very solid as well. Uh, he's not very much of a shot creator, but he's to do that in the right system. I think he can really, really thrive, and I think he can be a guy that uh, he could be the steal of the draft in the second round. To be honest, like I, on, I honestly believe that. Like he, he, he's got a lot of skill down there in the second round, and I think in the right system, if he goes to a team like the Warriors or something like that. He could be a dude that we're going to be like, oh, my God, they did it again, or something like that. Like, I, I, I honestly believe he could be the steal of the draft in the second round. He, he's got a lot of talent. He can shoot the ball. He can score off the ball. He doesn't need the ball in his hands all the time. He can, But when he does get the ball, he can get to the rim and score and also can hit very tough, big shots. So I, I really want to see what team gets him and how he could play the next level because I, I honestly think he could be the steal of the second round. At 35, we have James Najee. Uh, no relation to Zeke, um, from what I know. Uh, he's a 6'10", 225-pound center. He played at Barcelona last year he's in Spain. He's from Nigeria. He's still only 18 years old, but he does not look like an 18-year-old because he has a NBA-ready body already. He's very athletic for a big. Shot blocking ability is good. I think he has like a 7'3 or 7'4 wingspan at 6'10", which is crazy. The defensive potential, shot blocking potential is through the roof. His stats don't look crazy because he only played nine minutes a game uh, last year. But when he did play, I mean, he's got he's got a lot of potential, you know, a lot of potential. And I definitely see why he is kind of a little bit a early second round pick on a lot of boards. Uh, the defense potential is there. The shot blocker potential is there. The lob catch lobs he did that pretty well last year as well. Uh, he still needs a little bit more development, especially you know the inside game uh, because he is a bigger, you know, I mean he's younger. Uh, with the big body, probably going to need a little bit of time to really, really start getting it. And the fouls as well. 
but I think he's definitely a really good pick down in the second round. I mean, how you don't see a lot of times this size with that length at that age. I mean, being 18, 6'10", 7'4", wingspan, and already isn't, isn't even like a 225, a skinny 225. He's like a big 225. Like, yeah, I think I, can, I, I see why teams really like him, and I'm really interested to see what team goes, goes and picks him up. Because I think he could be... He can be very good down there in the second round, early second round. At 34, I have City Sissoko. He's a 6'6", 224-pound wing, player of the G League Ignite last year. He's 19 years old. He's from France. And he's a very interesting, another very interesting guy, very high energy, a lot of high energy, very athletic. He likes to get to the rim and likes to dunk and transition. Uh, very active hands defensively as well. He averages stealing a block at 6'6". Um, yeah, likes to attack the basket, loves to play in transition and get easy dunks. He can make nice passes. He loves getting to the rim and little drop-off passes to the big. He can do that a lot as well. Um, yeah, so he's very fun, high-energy guy that um, I, I'm a fan of. Um, the only thing is that he didn't really take a lot of jump shots. Um, he didn't really take a lot of jumpers. When he did shoot, he shot 31% from three. He took three three-pointers, but he didn't really start taking them until like, later in the year. But he didn't really take a lot of or create even a lot of jumpers. You know, when he did get the ball, he was going right to the rim. So definitely, maybe, it's, I don't know, maybe we'd like to see him get more confident in shooting the ball because that's a big thing, obviously, the next level. So he can, can he consistently shoot the ball. And probably needs to be a little bit more control. He does probably look like he's going to be a guy that's going to be a lot of, out of control a lot of times. So I'd like to see him um, get a little bit more controlled with the ball and stuff. But I think he's a very fun, very high-energy guy. Early second round, I think a lot of teams would take that chance out because I think he has a lot of potential, especially if he can shoot the ball you know, consistently with that athleticism. Um, he, could be, he could be very, very solid. At 33, I have Andre Jackson Jr. 6'6", 198-pound wing out of UConn. He's a junior, 21 years old. Won championship, of course, last year at UConn. And he's, a very, he's very interesting as well because he's, he's a Swiss Army knife type of guy. He doesn't have one thing that he's very good at but he's athletic can dunk you know can pass the ball handle the ball very well especially in the tournament he kind of like was like their point guard a little bit uh defensively he can do it rebounds well he can cut and score he just, he, does, he does a lot of different things swiss army knife type guy you could throw him at he could put him at the two the three even maybe even at the four sometimes and he can he can make plays you know be kind of secondary ball handler a cutter a defender all that stuff. The only thing is that the jump shot, uh, he's not there yet. Shooting, he only shot 28% from three last year on two and a half attempts. Did show a little bit of potential in the tournament. He had a couple. But, yeah, but he's a dude that, he fills a stat sheet. I mean, he's a dude that's going to have, I mean, he had a game against Gonzaga. He had 8, 9, and 10. You know, four, look at seven of the sidelines, 14, 10, and 8, 5, 10, and 4, 5, 7, 10, and 7. Like, he's got one of those guys that fills the stat sheet up, but just doing so many different things. And I think he's definitely a pretty solid guy. I, I think he can play similar to a Bruce Brown role in the NBA, the next, in the NBA. You know, especially if the jump shot starts to become decent, um, I think he could be a very valuable piece down there. At 32, I have Jaime Jaquez Jr., 6'7", 226-pound wing at UCLA. He's a 22-year-old senior. Um, I mean, if you watch college basketball, you know who Jaime Jaquez is. Um, I was a fan of him at UCLA. And he's very interesting. Very interesting because at UCLA, he was more of a power forward, I feel like. Power forward, small forward. But in the NBA, with his size, he's going to be more of a wing, small forward. Maybe maybe power forward. Could be small ball power forward. Um, he could finish very well inside through contact as well. You know, he made his living down there in the paint, scoring. Uh, he scored the ball pretty well. The jumper is decent. Definitely took a lot more later. Uh, the stats don't look crazy. He shot 31% from three, but he only took a little bit less than 3.3 a game. He didn't really start taking them until a little bit mid-season. Uh, and he knocked him down pretty solidly. He goes to shoot the free throw pretty well. Um, rebounds pretty good. And one thing I feel like is a big thing for him is his athleticism. But I think he's more athletic than you think, you know. He doesn't have a crazy-looking body, you know. He doesn't look very strong, but he's a lot more, a lot faster, very good in transition. Um... Yeah, it's just going to be very interesting to see how he could translate to the NBA as a wing player. Because at UCLA, he was more of a big big man, power forward type guy. And the NBA is going to be more of a small forward. So can he do that? And can he consistently stay in front of rings and score on the perimeter? 
and he's not gonna be on inside as much. But I think he definitely is gonna. I think he's gonna be a lot better at translating than a lot of people think. He he will be, and I'm high on him because I think he he can translate a lot better than a lot of people think he can. And at 31, I have Marcus Sasser, 6'2", 196 pound guard out of Houston. He's a senior, 22 years old, and he is honestly one of my favorites in this entire draft. To be honest, like I I, I like guys like him. Maybe that's why I have him 31. But I honestly believe he could be the steal of the draft. Like, say with Julian Strother, I believe him, him, Sasser or Strother, one of those two could be the, are going to be the steal of the draft. And I really like Marcus Sasser. He could score the ball from a lot of different ways. He can go get his own. His handle is nice. Uh, his three-point shot is very conf- confident as well. He shot 38% from three on a little bit under seven attempts per game. His handles are great. Defensively, he can lock in as well and get a lot of steals, can get his own. He's really good at doing that. The only thing... The big question is going to be how he translates to the next level in a sense of kind of he's a smaller guy that plays more of a two guard, but he's a point guard. Kind of similar to maybe like a Colin Sexton-ish type guy where he's kind of, they're going to maybe blist him as a point guard, but he really is a two. Like he doesn't really play make or pass the ball as much as a point guard. He's more of a let me go get my bucket type guard. But So he plays more like a two, but he's going to maybe be have to be a one. So it's going to be interesting to see how he can that can happen. But honestly, with his shooting ability and his defense, you know, and he's a, a bucket getter type guy with his handles and stuff, I think he can do really well. And I think he's going to be a guy that he'll be, he might he'll probably be a second round pick, most likely an early second round guy. But I think at the next level, he'll come in and have a big impact on a team. And teams are going to be like, dang, like we really let him slip to, the Celtics at 35 or something like that. Like, we really let him slip like that. Dang. We should have picked him up. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very high on Marcus Sasser. And that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Tomorrow, be on the lookout because we're going to do the rest, the top 30 on my big board. Uh, think Once again, if you do like the content, consider subscribing, like, turn on notifications, all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. It really upset a lot. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.